Papua New Guinea, country where only recently cannibalism has still been practiced. This place is unlike any other in the world. It holds 5% of the global biodiversity and over 1,000 different tribes live here. We ventured to explore this incredible country for 8 days and it was one of the most insane expeditions I've ever been on. Welcome to Papua New Guinea! But first, let's go back to the beginning. This expedition started in Brisbane, Australia, with us taking the first dose of anti-malaria tablets as Papua is in the malaria risk region. Then it was time to somehow get to Papua New Guinea. One more flight to go to Papuan Highlands to a city called Mount Hagen. Papua New Guinea sits on the second biggest island on the planet. In the country, there are approximately 1,000 different ethnic groups who speak around 850 languages, the most languages spoken in the entire world. After arriving to Mount Hagen, we needed to sort out a few things. We rented our own car, went to a city to get a local SIM card, which turned out to be a problem needed to be solved by like 10 employees, and last stop was a local market to get some basic food. Okay, so we need to fly back to our car because our fixer says that it's not safe here on the market, so we're making our way back to the Mount Hagen market. But some crazy lot of people and yeah, many many goods and stuff so let's go back now from Mount Hagen we went to Car village a very small settlement in southern highlands province from where our local contact is coming from okay so there are a few issues right away with this car the first one is this huge crack and the middle of the window the second one is that the brakes like only work partially that it makes such a horrible sound. The third one is that uh, if you're going straight, that means you have to turn with your steering wheel to the right. You see going straight and the steering wheels like this. And also another issue is that my seatbelt doesn't work. So the only way to fasten is to somehow attach it with this another seatbelt and make some knots. So very, very good start. Even though it wasn't that far, the journey took half a day because of the very bad road infrastructure. Okay, we are now going to a very remote village on this very muddy footpath and all of the villagers are going behind me. Almost everybody is carrying a machete, so that's kind of a strange feeling. I, they hope they will not use it. And now there is a very strange section here. Upon arriving to Car Village, we found out that we were the first ever Europeans to visit their village. The beer people around here, they most welcome you, they work to welcome you, and this is called a Car Village. After spending a few hours inside the village, the villagers have become more used to our presence and they started being more open, even showing us their homes and eventually cooking a dinner for us. So this is the house where they have in the middle the kitchen. And how many people do live inside? More than five, but less than ten. This is the bedroom. As the word spread, almost everybody from the village gathered because they were incredibly curious to see white people in their village for the very first time. So we just got invited to a dinner inside Car village and hopefully it's not what they usually eat. Our 
time in the car village was up, so we said goodbye and started our way back to Mount Hagen. So we are now going back from Southern Highlands to Mount Hagen, but we are not taking the same road as we came here, but an alternative one. Victor told us that it's an area which is, and there are enemies to his tribe, so if they see him, then they know there are enemies on their place and it doesn't need to end in a good way so hopefully nothing will happen because now it's really getting slightly out of hand At one point we got to a very bad situation, where we were stopped by around 50 villagers, some of them were carrying axes, bush knives and other weapons. The guy that was driving with us tried to discuss something with them, but in the end we had to quickly turn back and escape out of that place as soon as possible. And now we are inside Papuan jungle. We are going on some small, small footpath between all of these different green leaves and everything like that. And there's some small river stream here. And it's actually very nice and actually it's not so hot and humid. And it's a very, very nice weather. After the whole day, we arrived back to Mount Hagen, had a one night in a cockroach infested hotel and the next morning we were already on our way to a different province. Good morning, so today is day 5 of our one adventure and now we are heading from Mount Hagen to the province of Chimbu to a small town and there should be allegedly some culture show happening. While driving, we were passing many markets right next to the road and we decided to stop at one and the locals were super friendly and wanted me to capture them on my camera. actually at the slope of the highest mountain in Papua New Guinea called Mount Wilhelm. It has a height of 4509 meters and if you want to get to the all the way to the top then you have to walk for like two three days. So villagers are playing cards in their free time. Playing for money. Uh, I still not playing for money. <laughs> the reason why we went to the Chimbu province in the first place was to experience incredibly unique tribe festival where around 50 different tribes come together and without fighting each other they showcase their culture. Right now we are at the Chimbu culture festival. It's happening now for two days and it's a complete madness. There are tens of different of tribes located right here, maybe 50 or 100 different tribes and all showcasing their culture and it's something insane. So we're gonna take a look now. Specifically, only in August or in September, all 
major majority of them here in the Papuan Highlands and you can see something which you cannot see anywhere else in the world. It's just insane. You see one thing is that here there is super big mud everywhere. It's so sticky. So my, my shoes now weigh like two kilos each. part of our journey took us more east to an area around the Asaro Valley, where we spent the following two days. We are at an incredibly remote village that it's really basic, only basic houses built by people that are living in them. There is absolutely no electricity. We have some cattle stock here. It's incredible how the life here in Papua New Guinea in villages looks like. Oh, <laughs> can I come in? So here you sleep, here is place for fire, for kitchen. And how many people sleep here? Uh, it's like five or six. Five or six people here. Yes. Inside the village, we got an opportunity to talk with a man who explained us firsthand the cruel reality of today's violence between tribes and how it actually is. What, what they want, you see, as a result of the fight. If they win, then what? They're happy. Just happy, not they take your village? No, they're happy. Just happy? Yeah. You chopped some ladies' legs? legs. Yes, yes, and our men. And they are demanding us, we have to pay, how much are demanding? 95,000 plus 20 pigs. For what? For compensating them. For chopping the yeah. legs. Yes. And it's still pending, we haven't completed the argument yet. So they come and they attack and we were not ready. Everyone has to scream, oh, we have a trouble in the village, so everyone get yourself ready. Yes. So from there we block off this path and then we chase them because this is our place. So you have the guns in the houses? Yeah, but we kept them secretly mm. from the government. Gun is not allowed in the country, so... And everybody had them? Yes, yes, they don't keep them in their house, but they hide them in their secret, some secret place. So they know where they put them, so when they fight, when they fight, they just go there and grab their weapon. And but where do you buy the guns? Uh, sometimes we trade them, trade them with drugs. Where do you get the drugs from? We grow them here. Marijuana, cannabis, yeah, cannabis. If you can see them growing there. Okay. And you trade that for guns? Yep. It means here you can buy, have as many wives as you can afford. You can have many wives you want, because you have wealth, you have money. How much is one wife? Uh, like back in the 2090s, we pay 1,000. 1,000 for one wife? 1,000, 2,000 for one wife. But today the education is increasing and the value of a lady is increasing. So we pay 10 to 20,000. For my wife? Yes. To whom? To the parents or? To the parents and the, her relatives. You have 10 wives, they like each other or not really? It's not really. So they don't meet together? Sometimes in the first place they don't meet. In the first place they don't meet because they can kill the, till it's, it's another. Oh, really? Oh. I see. If I go and meet the other wife, the other one just go and get a knife and eat chicken to kill her. Oh, right. Okay, Moneva. Moneva. After visiting the village, it was time to meet one of the most scary tribes in Papua New Guinea, the Asaro Mudman. The history behind this tribe is largely unknown, but legend has it that these warriors, coated in mud from the Asaro River, were mistaken for spirits instilling fear in their enemies who fled terrified. Their rituals and beliefs intertwined the natural and the supernatural, making the Mudman not just a tribe, but a legend that still haunts the highlands today.
We just got to the village of Asaro from where the famous madmen of Asaro are coming from and we will have a very unique opportunity to see them as they passed on their traditional style of scaring off the enemies from generation to generation. So let's head inside. Each mask weighs around 15 kilos. Using clay from the Asaro river, each mask is handcrafted and then dried on sun. Making one big size mask therefore can take up to multiple days. Continuing on our way from the Asaro village, we met with a different tribe, this time right next to the river flowing through the Asaro valley. we got an information that there is a member of a very special tribe in the area who practices incredibly dangerous and potentially deadly cleaning technique. Therefore, we managed to somehow meet him and he told us a story. Big problem we play and my cup of listener. We should not be placed at marriage to two plus three to a Mary. You will have one quick in that quick. Missed up with the little thing too. Incredibly stiff, that's like some steel or something. I cannot imagine how he can swallow it. And for until which part he swallows it? Until here, yeah. Here? Yeah. We probably we no go down. What a pleasure we try to show you all outside the factory. All the time, this is one of the blood, this is not all the same. We deliver all the time walking this way. But before two plus, all the time now, we say, now we all get out, we say, show you. This player in the blow, that you run, colon, big in it, he go come up, colon now, come up, man, swim this plat, you know, not black pool quick. Maritim plat, nearly, all over all his tap, he come, he come, he come, he can go plat time. A man in all in this plat, you know, not black pool quick in bed. A man in all in this plat, he strong plat, some people took me. The next morning we started the day off with a hike to a nearby mountain from which you can overlook the entire Asaro Valley. Right and now we're climbing to the top of a mountain right above the village of Asaro. The tribe would come here when there were wars. They we're hiding from the enemies and right now we are at the top it took like 25 30 minutes it was quite steep hike to the top but we managed and now we can look over the whole asaro and all the children of the world 
black and yellow, brown and white on the faces in After our morning hike, we unexpectedly got a chance to visit a local school to meet the kids and see how the student life looks like here in Papua New Guinea. It's incredible to see what are the differences between European style teaching and here in Papua New Guinea. So let's go and take a look inside some of the classrooms. Oh. Hello. Hello. Good morning! This means we are looking at the part of speech. Yes or no? How many part of speech? No! How many part of speech? No! Our days in Asaro Valley were slowly coming to an end, but we still had few more tribes to meet. Next up was Luhuka tribe, iconic for their singing to symbolize bonding as a family. The last tribe we met here was Bene tribe. They used to be spies going to enemies' villages secretly and surprising them out of nowhere. Today is our last day of Papua New Guinea adventure, but now we got a very, very unique opportunity to visit a village where the famous Skeleton Men tribe lives. Here in the rugged highlands of Papua New Guinea lives the Chimbu tribe, also known as the Skeleton Men. First encountering the Western world in 1934, not much is known about them. The skeleton men paint their bodies with white clay and ash, transforming themselves in the likeness of skeletons. This look was able to scare off any enemies they could encounter. time in Papua New Guinea was up. The journey took us through multiple regions of central Papua, meeting numerous tribes and villagers on our way. Although the country is beautiful and most of the people we met were amazing, it's definitely not easy place to travel, so you need to be prepared for it. In fact, on our last day before leaving Papua, something happened and we needed to call police as we really didn't feel safe at that moment. Takže právě jdeme do bankomatu a protože jsme na papuinu jak vinej, bereme samopal. In the end, everything was okay and the next day we left from Mount Hagen, where they had really interesting security. Nemají rengeny na letišti, takže musí zkontrolovat na ruhávně. Takže jsou tím. Okay. Okay. Good. Is it okay? Layover in Port Moresby, and then after eight days, we said goodbye to Papua for the last time. Overall, this journey through the second biggest island on the planet was absolutely incredible. If you're an experienced traveler and seek unique adventure of your lifetime, then Papua New Guinea should definitely be on your list. I hope you enjoyed this travel documentary and I will see you from somewhere else on our planet next time.